Uh, for those of you who don't know, who haven't been tuned into the channel, I'm Eric, this is the Nerd Cave, and I love the GameCube. What's going on guys? Eric coming back at you from the Nerd Cave. And today we're gonna be doing something a little bit different. Today we're gonna be looking at some of my favorite GameCube games in my personal collection. GameCube is hands down one of my favorite consoles. Um, I do own some of the more expensive games. Nothing super crazy. I sold my copy of Cube of War a while ago. It's honestly not that fun. My collection is sculpted more based on what I enjoy than what is monetarily worth a lot. Um, as you'll see, I actually realized when putting this list together that the game that I personally put at number one is only a $50 game. So stay tuned to see what game that is. But without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump into it. So the first game on my list in the number 10 spot, and I'm sure I'll get crucified in the comments by some of you for putting this at number 10, is Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. It's a fun game, probably one of the better RPGs on the GameCube, in my opinion. That being said, for anybody who thinks that this game is better than the original Paper Mario, you are wrong, I will fight you on that. Original Paper Mario, way better game. This game, pretty fun. Uh, if you can't get your hands on the original Paper Mario, you want to play a game that's almost identical with mildly different characters and shoehorned in mechanics that you really don't need, this is the game for you. Second, in the number nine spot, this is one of our cheapest games uh, actually on the list. And it's a game that I actually got, uh, I think out of any of these games for the lowest price. And that is Beautiful Joe. Paid five bucks for this game. Excellent game. Uh, I think it's about a 35-ish dollar game now, right in that ballpark. So, Beautiful Joe, great game. Side scroller, kind of beat em up game. Tough as nails, super hard. Beautiful Joe 2 is also very hard. I really kind of went back and forth on which one I wanted to put on this list as far as which one I do enjoy more. Kind of came down to this is the one I played more with my friends back in the day was the original Beautiful Joe. Played a lot with my friend Nate and his stepbrother Sean. Great game. In the number seven spot, we have, uh, in this game, some people will say that the first one uh, is not as good. Hard to say. In the number eight spot, uh, we have Pikmin 2. Uh, excellent game, kind of a collect before the timer runs out, puzzle type of experience. Almost RTS-like, real-time strategy-like. Um, I don't like real-time strategy games. I am a big puzzle game guy, so that this game definitely has that going for it with me. Um, but I'm not a big real-time strategy game guy, but I did freaking love Pikmin 2. It is very fun, and I recommend you play it many, many times because uh, it's worth it to complete it 100%. Next game, now at the number seven spot, not the number eight spot, is gonna be Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness. Just kinda wanted to give a shout out to this one. This is the most expensive game on my entire list. This is an expensive game. For those of you who don't know, this game does go for about $200 complete in nice condition. And just for you guys out there on the hunt for this game, just so you know, complete does include things other than the manual. So definitely look into it to see what all this game should come with to be 100% complete if you're looking for this one, because it is a bit of an expensive game. But I just I want to give a shout out to this one for being not Pokemon Coliseum, being not a mainline Pokemon game, being something that is different in a time before that was okay. This game is kind of a cult classic now, but didn't necessarily get the best reviews when it first came out. Next game in the number six spot is going to be WarioWare Inc. Really any WarioWare game deserves a place on its respective consoles top 10 list. Just excellent mini games, a lot of fun, great game to pass the controller around with friends. Awesome party game, always a good time. Wario is weird as heck, which I can really appreciate. Uh, but definitely, if you haven't played it before, check out WarioWare on any console. Doesn't have to be the GameCube one. Honestly, pick a console, uh, probably WarioWare for it. There's a WarioWare on Switch, if anybody has the Nintendo Switch. The new WarioWare, I haven't got that one myself. I'm sure it's equally excellent. Next up, coming in at the number five spot, we have Super Monkey Ball 2. 
This is another one. Played with my friends a ton back in the day. Uh, just an excellent, excellent game. So if you haven't had a chance to play this one, I highly, highly recommend you take the time to check out Super Monkey Ball 2. It's got a lot of kind of awesome mini games that are sports based. So it's like got like golf, soccer. We got fight. Fight was the one that we didn't like. Nobody enjoyed fight. Uh, but baseball, dog fight was okay. Race was a lot of fun. Target, boat race, shot, billiards. Billiard is one of the more fun ones. The bowling one's really fun. Some really fun mini games in this. Super Monkey Ball 1 is also good, but Super Monkey Ball 2 kind of kicked everything up a notch. It's an instance where the sequel just kind of made everything better. So I would probably recommend if you're only going to get one of them, get Super Monkey Ball 2. Great thing about that game is, especially if you're looking at the Player's Choice version, it's only about a $20 or $25 game. So it's fairly reasonable to get your hands on, especially as far as GameCube games are concerned. Now we are getting into the final four games. The top of the top my favorite GameCube games in my collection. I do want to preface this before we jump into these with the following disclaimer. I have some games in my collection that I have not played. I want to play them and I'm sure they are excellent. So for everyone who loves Twilight Princess, haven't played it. Wind Waker, played it only a little bit. Not enough to really have an opinion on it. Pretty much all the Zelda games haven't touched enough to have a strong opinion for you. Metroid, and another one. I own it, I'd like to get into it eventually. Haven't played it, so it's not on this list. So for you diehard fans of those games, sorry, you're not gonna see them here. But my top four games are gonna be Animal Crossing at number four. This game is one that me, my brother, and my brother's wife, my sister-in-law Beth, played like crazy back in the day. This game's super fun. You can all kind of live and share an island together but play single player separately so it was really a unique concept. You could get NES games in this game. This game has NES games in it. You could harvest them and you could have them in the, your house and it was amazing. It's the only Animal Crossing as far as I know to offer that feature where it actually had other games that you could unlock in the game and play inside of the game but it was just just so good like it that wasn't the only thing that made it good the new animal crossing like i recognize that it stepped so many things up but there's things that are are missing from this one like i miss rossetti may not be a popular opinion but rossetti was like annoying but he was my annoying so sad that he's not in the new ones but animal crossing freaking excellent game you know what time it is top three baby so in the number three spot we do have Mario Kart Double Dash. I know it's hotly debated which is the best Mario Kart game of all time. I would say hands down it is Mario Kart 8 if they did one thing. One little thing. And that's given me the ability to play with two drivers that are different and to swap them back and forth to switch which item is active. That mechanic in and of itself was amazing. Like, please... Just give, give even an option in Mario Kart 8 to race with two drivers. Make it a game type. Like, give us something. You're putting so much time into Mario Kart 8. Please, for the love of God, put this functionality into Mario Kart 8. Because it seems like we're never going to get another Mario Kart game. And that would make Mario Kart 8 perfect. Because Mario Kart Double Dash has that mechanic. And is the single greatest mechanic in any Mario Kart game. And it is missing from every other Mario Kart game in this table. This next one is a bit of a weird choice for me to put at number two for those of you who have followed my channel for a while. For those of you who are familiar with the type of games that I like, you may know I'm not a fighting game guy. I'm bad at fighting games. I don't like fighting games. I'm not good at them and I hate them. That being said, there is one exception and it's again because I played it with my friends, Nate, Sean, Jake, all the time back in the day. And that's Super Smash Brothers Melee. Excellent game. Uh, if you're playing by as anybody besides Sheik, you're doing it wrong as far as I'm concerned. Sheik is, is the character to play as. I was really good at Sheik. I was really annoying as Sheik. Yes, I know Sheik is a top tier character. And the cheese that you could do with Sheik is real. Again, I can't stress enough. Terrible fighting game player. I needed all the help I could get by playing as Sheik. They still hose me. I play Super Smash Bros. Ultimate online. I have a couple times uh, with Nate and his cousin Jake. Absolutely destroyed me at that game. It's awful. It's awful. 
But maybe if we could all huddle around a GameCube, just maybe, I could show them how it's done. Who knows? And this last one, my number one spot, you guys are going to tell me, oh, you double dips on a franchise, you can't do that. Well, I can do whatever I want, because this is my top ten and the games that I think are the best. So my number one spot is Pikmin. This game, if you do not buy any other game for GameCube, buy Pikmin. If you don't hate puzzle games, you will love this game. If you even are like vaguely okay with the concept of puzzle games, you will like this game. It's much more in depth in a way. It's a little pushier than Pikmin 2. Like I think Pikmin 2 gave you more freedom to kind of beat. Whereas Pikmin 1, if you want to 100% this game, you need to be absolutely crushing it all the time. You need to get real good at this game uh, to be able to 100% it. But let me tell you, this game has multiple endings and they are all pretty interesting and they are all very funny. And the 100% ending is definitely worth grinding out and not just YouTubing because it is pretty cool and kind of gives a different feel around the rest of the game don't want to say anything too spoilery again if i can't recommend that you buy any other game on gamecube recommend that you buy pikmin especially if you're playing single player if you are looking for the best party game mario kart double dash super smash bros melee super monkey ball you really can't go wrong with any of those they're all excellent party games obviously there's mario party games on gamecube so if you're really looking for uh, multiplayer games, party games, Mario Party is probably the way to go. There's four of them on GameCube. Four? Yeah, four, five, six, and seven, I think, and then it jumps over to Wii. There's several of them on GameCube. I've heard that the earlier ones are the best. I do own all four of them. I don't get much opportunity to play those either. I feel like I've played all the Mario Party games over the years, so I'm sure I've played them in the past. It's just been a while. That being said, those are my top ten GameCube games from my own personal collection, games that I absolutely love and if you enjoyed this content remember to like remember to subscribe to be notified when new videos go live and if you haven't tuned into the ds or bs series go ahead and jump over there because it's definitely worth tuning into some of those episodes uh, get entered into that giveaway so you can win some of the stuff you'll see that we're giving away in that series and thank you again so much for sticking around to the end and when you see those toys and video games off in the distance especially if they're for gamecube remember that it's not a mirage you guys have a great day.